Welcome to Startups in Action Radio and Crowd Success TV. Hi, I'm media mentor Mike Hayes with your crowdfunding intelligence report. Would you like to stop looking at crowdfunding from the outside in and start meeting and networking with the professionals who are creating and driving this unstoppable force? Well, you can meet me at KickerCon Conference and Expo in Houston, Texas, starting August 28th. Recently, I interviewed the creators of KickerCon for my nationally broadcast AM radio shows. So now, let me introduce you to Justin Ryan and Terrell Jones, the dynamic co-founders of this exciting crowdfunding event. Okay, we're back now, and this time we have Justin Ryan and Terrell Jones, marketing director and co-founders of KickerCon.com. Gentlemen, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having us on. Oh, my pleasure. Very excited about the upcoming event that's going to be held on August 28th down in uh, Houston, Texas. And uh, there's still rooms available, I believe, at the Hilton. But uh, tell me about uh, what's going on right now as you're getting ready for this exciting gathering all about crowdfunding. Oh, we're just trying to get everything completely set up. Uh, we've got everything almost how we want it. And uh, we're at that last stages of getting the conference uh, completed. Okay, great. Now, a lot of people, oddly enough, as great as crowdfunding is and as many benefits as it has, the real problem is how many people still don't know what it is or even that it exists. So why don't each one of you tell me your thoughts on how you would describe what crowdfunding is and why people should want to know about it. Uh, crowdfunding is just this phenomenon of, uh, of being able to... Uh, easily fund something uh, with the the power of, of basically crowds. Uh, there's there's quite a few ways that you can do this, uh, but mainly right now you've got equity and reward base. Joe, um, you want to take it? Well, um, I think it's probably a disruptive uh, tool now in finance. Um, traditionally, we'd have to be accredited investors to invest for equity-based crowdfunding or any kind of equity-based um, uh, investment. So crowdfunding is basically a new take on how you finance opportunities, whether it's uh, donation-based, rewards-based, or equity-based. It's a disruptive way of getting finance. And I think the, the advent of social media and the internet has broadened the scope. So usually, traditionally, you would have to get venture capital from your local venture capitalists. And it, it really took who you knew within that group of angel investors or venture capitalists. Now you can start a deal in Israel and get financed in New York and California or Texas. It doesn't really matter where you are, you can invest in this opportunity. So I think it's actually broken down a lot of barriers to entry. Well, the old saying is you can eat an elephant, but you just have to do it one bite at a time. <laughs> And uh, I kind of think uh, that crowdfunding is the elephant in the room. It's huge. Uh, there's so much to it. There's a lot to learn. So let's break it down into two parts. Let's start with rewards-based crowdfunding first, which is now legal. Uh, it's legal now, I should say. It has been for about the last five years, uh, doing billions of dollars each year. Then we'll transition into equity in just a second and some of the uh, new things that are coming down the pike. But, you know, I just, people wonder, and they scratch their head and they go, I don't understand how crowdfunding could exist, why it exists, why somebody would donate. I just don't get it. And yet, I re read a, uh, a brand new university study uh, by a professor who basically found that today people recognize there's a lot of problems in the world and that they would actually rather help someone than just buy more stuff. And so with uh, rewards-based crowdfunding, where you're pre-buying products, you can kind of do both. You can get stuff, but at the same time, you're helping somebody get a company started and get off the ground by pre-tailing, pre-purchasing, whatever you want to call it. So why don't you each comment on that, if you would? So, I mean, you're exactly right. Uh, the, the rewards base is great for that. Uh, we're, we're partnering with a, a lady named Stephanie Jelly, and she's more on the donation base. Uh, so, like you were saying, not everybody wants something in return. 
And, and that's where she comes in and she, she takes charge and says, hey, you know, we, we have this problem here. If you want to help, 100% goes to that, uh, to that problem. Uh, rewards based is, is just as good if you want something in return. Uh, a lot of companies are using this for the, their initial funding and then on top of that they're able to do market research uh, which is perfect for because you're getting, you're getting both of those things all at once. Um, Carol? Um, I think all three methods of crowdfunding for right now are valid and the reason I say that is because if you have donation based there's an emotion attached to it you want to help, you want to make things better, and there's just certain projects that just tug at the heartstrings of the individual that wants to invest in it. Rewards base is always good to get a little, get the product or get a t-shirt, you know, something that you really believe in. I'll give you an example. I really believe in solar roadways. Whether I got equity in it or not, I was too late to in invest in it, but it emotionally got my attention, and I think it's something that should be done. So I would still invest in it even if I didn't get equity. Um, I like to ride my bicycle. It's 100 degrees in Texas, but I can't ride it in the daytime, so I'd rather ride, ride at night. And that Revo light mm. was crowdfunded. I'd love to have that so I can ride at night when it's 80 degrees instead of 100, you know, 110 sometimes. So it just depends on what your emotion says. So th those different types of uh, rewards base and donation base, I don't mind doing it, and I think they have a place. I think sometimes you need proof of concept and customer validation before you go to the equity. So I think. They, they pay, play a role at the very beginning if you need to do design build for your product and you just need to get that initial startup cash to build the prototype and then I think you can do an equity round later. Why can't you do both? You can do both. You can. In fact, let me uh, tell you guys a uh, quick story of a crowd success story interview that I did with the CEO of uh, a little company called Cooley Cooley Foods, which I think is just an awesome story. A uh, gal went over to Africa, worked in the Peace Corps, started to suffer the effects of starvation, and the locals started telling her about a little plant at Moringa. And uh, she discovered it, came back here and started thinking about it. And then she started to get the uh, community to gather Moringa and turn it into health bars here, help them over here. Then she uh, crowdfunded for 40, about $40,000 on Indiegogo for Cooley Cooley Foods. Then she took the 40 k to help her with the next step of equity crowdfunding, went on to then raise almost $400,000 in equity crowdfunding. That being said, so now let's transition over to your thoughts on equity crowdfunding because I saw your letter, uh, Terrell, about who should come down to KickerCon and uh, it was quite extensive. So why don't you talk a little bit about who should come down there? Well, I pretty much said everybody, I think, in that list. I think but, you uh, did. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason, the way we designed the, the, our show is that we wanted to reach the three platforms, but we also wanted to reach the vertical markets that were logical. So you have your nonprofits, your churches, your schools, you have, um, and that's on your, you know, your donation-based type stuff. So if you got a startup project, if you're a maker and you build things with 3D printing, or if you're a software developer or a game developer, that's on the software technology side. Um, there was also the equity part, where if you want to invest in the oil and gas and get a piece of an oil rig, or if you wanted to get a uh, piece of real estate, which real estate is very exciting for most yeah. people because you know finding finance to do deals is always a challenge. So that's 90% of the deals anyways, getting finance. So um, we wanted to have a well-rounded event. And I like to tell people that we wanted to be the South by Southwest of crowdfunding and you know, sort of like one spark and, and yeah. South, Southwest mixed together. So there's also art and music and uh, what else? Film. Yeah, film. And um, all these different projects that people, I mean, there's three movies that just, there was th two movies just recently that were crowdfunded. A Spike Lee movie, a Zach Braff movie, a Veronica Mars movie. They were all crowdfunded. So um, why not have it for everybody? Yeah. And it was to say that somebody in equity crowdfunding will see a donation base project that they want to invest in at that type of conference. So the crowd is where we want things to happen. We want deals to happen. We want ideas to come out, come about it as well. You know, I just interviewed uh, Elton Revis, the CEO of OneSpark, who folks uh, had a festival in Jacksonville, Florida with 250 
thousand attendees. So uh, if you're, you know, you don't want to be behind the the uh, switch here on crowdfunding. This is something you really want to pay attention to. This right. is growing. It's growing very fast. It's got tremendous energy. So what kind of attendance are you guys uh, expecting? I actually reached out to him and asked, trying to see if he can help us get at least a. Uh, Ten uh, percent of that, so you know uh, it. <laughs> we haven't heard back from him, but uh, I'm sure uh, he'd appreciate it. A compliment, but we we look up to them. Um, we're hoping to have at least a thousand to two thousand people there. Um, we're just uh, this is our first event in Texas. Uh, we're trying to get the people in Houston to recognize crowdfunding. Our biggest challenge is education. Yeah, uh, we can walk into a room. I, I walk into investor rooms all the time and ask them who's heard of crowdfunding, and maybe one out of twenty people has ever heard of Kickstarter or crowdfunding. So it's just right now it's a challenge. We it's exciting and it's also a challenge because you know we know there's a big opportunity, but we also get nervous because people have never heard of it. So yeah. our job is to be kind of like an evangelist and let everybody know what's going on. Now I visualize uh, kick, I visualize KickerCon as being networking with experts, sharks, distributors, resource providers, social media, publicity, direct response, and all the folks that are the engine that make crowdfunding work. Because uh, crowdfunding portals, uh, if you don't raise the first thirty percent, one hundred percent on your own effort, nothing happens. And so you need the professional resources, people that really know what they're doing to drive the traffic. And those are some of the people that you can meet down at KickerCon, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're hoping to have uh, a lot of investors there on site. And, you know, of course, we have Kevin, Kevin Harrington coming. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's created a really nice uh, show for us. Uh, to, to be able to have people come in and pitch him and, and his fellow investors. Uh, so it should be a great show. We have seven separate events, actually. So it, it, it's, a, it's a thorough show. It is. Uh, I've known Kevin for probably 25 years. I've been in the uh, direct response industry for decades. And I interviewed Julie Coons, the CEO of the Electronic Retailing Association. The direct response industry is a $300 billion industry. And I said to her, Julie, I've looked at, I've been in direct response for 25 years. I've looked at crowdfunding. It's really a new form of direct response. You tell a story on video and you distribute the video. That's direct response. Yeah. So I think one way to describe it, and this is a challenge for all crowdfunders, how do you introduce crowdfunding to your friends and family to help prime the pump? Because you don't want to just knock on the door and say, hey, I'm crowdfunding, give me some money. You know, uh, it's not panhandling. It's not charity. It really is the new business plan for the digital economy. So I think it's very important that, that you know, guys like us, the pros in the industry, really help people and teach them how to explain what crowdfunding is and give them the tools they need to reach out get it going right at home with the tools they need to introduce what crowdfunding is. What are your thoughts on that? Well, our we designed KickerCon to be an education portal. So um, we understand that there's a, there's a formula. And uh, most people think that they could just put up a video on Kickstarter or Indiegogo and magically money's going to appear. And uh, people are shocked that they have to actually talk to their sphere of influence up front. And, and we've heard this from our consultants that are speaking. we got several that have told us the same thing over and over again. You have to do a pre-launch program about 90 days, six to eight weeks to work on a pre-launch. And then right. you got your, your campaign and then you have to, you know, by, you know, it's not going to happen probably towards the end of your campaign that you'll probably finally got a media article written about you because of all this work you've done on the pre-launch. And then all of a sudden, you get all your money at the end. And they've noticed over time that this formula seems to work. So one of the things that we've tried to do is we try to have every aspect of that that whole methodology taught at KickerCon. So the whole idea is you come to KickerCon, you're gonna learn what crowdfunding is, you're gonna learn how to have a successful campaign. And so that's what we've tried to make KickerCon be because we, we understand there's an education process. Heck, when he reproached me, I only knew about Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but I didn't really pay attention because I'm a tech guy. So I was more worried about how do I uh, 
host this guy uh, at Rackspace or something. So uh, now my, I'm kind of savvy at it. But, you know, before I, was, I didn't even know what was going on with crowdfunding. Now I'm excited about it. Absolutely. You know, it seems like in equity crowdfunding, uh, I think two or two, maybe three of the biggest initial successes will probably be real estate, uh, maybe gas and oil, um, and franchising. Because franchising is really where business hits the main street. And I could see uh, uh, returning veterans doing crowdfunding campaigns to raise the money, even rewards-based or charity-based, donation-based, to raise the money they need to buy their job uh, and start that. They're well-trained, they're great people, um, and, and we owe them something. And this would be a great way to help veterans, you know, get their, their feet on the ground and get going again. So, you know, the, there's going to be great miracles, really, that come out of crowdfunding. W what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, Terrell and I both are, are veterans. Actually, yeah. I'm active duty Air Force. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I think you're exactly right. Um, you're, you're you're right about it. Be, us being well trained people, we we can uh, we can take what we've learned in the military and and push it straight to something on the outside. Uh, crowdfunding is a great avenue for that. Uh, get you started and get your story out there. Uh, that's one of the stories. Actually, one of the things I wanted to bring up. Uh, we uh, we have a few people that are going to talk about telling your story because that's one of the biggest things with crowdfunding is getting your story out there and getting mm -hmm. out there correctly, uh, yeah. sh showing exactly what it is that uh, that uh, can relate to the the person on the other end. We have shame. I have a shameless plug about veterans. We have. Uh, three-day passes for veterans. There's only a limited amount, but uh, we can share that link with you for veterans that want to participate at KickerCon. We have that for students and for veterans. So um, if you have a you know DD-214 or your military ID, we will give you a pass to come on down to Houston, but we also have it for university students as well. That's awesome. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways that people can help with crowdfunding beyond even donations. If you don't have two nickels to rub together, but if you've got uh, some friends and family, you can help a veteran or a campaign by, by helping it go viral, send it out or put the word out or providing support or help. Uh, I look at this, I really kind of go back um, to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you know, if you want an education, and if you're willing to walk 20 miles to get it, you, you know, he got it. And that's kind of what crowdfunding does. It's not just a matter of, you know, the haves and the have-nots. If you've got the spirit, the willingness, and the fortitude, the stick to itiveness to go for it and try. And you never fail until you fail to learn or quit. So if you've got the, the ability to stick with something, put the word out, you're committed to it, and you're willing to walk those 20 miles uh, to do what it takes to make it happen, with crowdfunding, you can pretty much make it happen, don't you think? Very much so. Yeah, um, I, I think it's a very exciting situation because it's a 60, 90 day uh, campaign, and you're really running hard. I mean, yeah. you're promoting, promoting, promoting. I mean. We, I mean, even we're promoting this event, and right. it's a lot of sleepless nights. So I'm exhausted now. But um, the actual campaign, I don't know how some of these consultants can do three at a time, because the energy it takes to put your muscle into these projects is is pretty intense, and it's a short period of time. And you pretty much got only about 90 days of energy to be doing this, but it's worth it mm -hmm. at the end. And so I think it's a very exciting thing. It's you, you hear about return on investment in certain types of deals that you work in. It might take a year or two years. It's return on investment, maybe five years. The return on investment in crowdfunding would be 90 days. And you know, if you know that you're going to get at least something for your efforts, it's, it's actually worth it. Because you know, before you didn't have it. Now you have this new tool that you can actually get things done. So right now, there's really no excuses. Well, you, used you, to be, can also, you can also do serialized crowdfunding. So if at first you don't succeed, there's nothing to stop you from doing, you know, one campaign after the next and, and uh, you know, keep changing and keep trying, which is kind of the mantras of direct response. Test, observe, adjust, expand. Because exactly. that's another huge benefit of crowdfunding is the feedback that you get. I have interviewed more crowdfunding campaigners across all portals around the world than I believe 
any other human being on planet Earth. And I mean that sincerely because I've interviewed five a day sometimes. And I always use my background in direct response to drill down and ask them, well, which journalist brought in the most money? What's their name? What's it, what company? What media company? What's their email? Did you get more traction with social media publicity? So if you don't have a social network, you know, let the journalists do the heavy lifting. Uh, tell a good story. And, and pique the interest of the journalists. And also that 50% of funds, as much as 50% of funding comes into a crowdfunding campaign from outside of the host country. So global publicity is also powerful. And like maybe the New York Times doesn't pick it up. Maybe the London Times picks it up, does the story. And then who does it next? The New York Times after they see it in the London Times. There is something for everybody. And that's why everybody should go down to KickerCon August 28th in Houston, Texas, and join us all because I'll be there too, guys. So thanks for joining me. Any final thoughts? We can't wait to meet up with you down in that's Texas, right. down yeah. in Houston. That'd be great. Go crowdfunding. Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys.